Oh, she's on there. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Thanks for on my original invitation, so I just wanted to make sure you got the email last night. So. I did. Hi, I, I did. Had just trouble getting logged in for a few minutes ago. Yes, me too. All right, I'll go ahead and call us to order um, and introduce the JCPS members of the committee. And then as we do the community partner updates, I'll let you guys introduce yourselves as well. So I'm Stacy Bewley. I am the new kid on the block, <laughs> as you can as you can tell. And I am the community relations supervisor for ACE. With Boyd Gudgel, who's the assistant director for high school. Tim Chevalier, who is our chief of special education. Dana Collins is assistant counsel for ACE. Um, Angela Cheer is the assistant director for middle school. John Roberts, Assistant Director Elementary, and Rashana Mullaney, who is our lead psychologist. Angie Parks is graciously <laughs> agreed to take minutes one last time. Um, our purpose, again, for this committee is to serve in an advisory capacity to the Jefferson County Public School System, and in particular, to the Department of Exceptional Child Education in its goal of providing students with disabilities a free, appropriate public education. I'll go ahead and, and review the minutes, the highlights of the minutes. They are attached to your agenda. Um, I sent, but I'll review those from June and we'll see if there are any corrections that need to be made. At the June meeting, Kim gave some district updates, including information about summer learning, changes in suspension for K-3, supplemental school year, a draft of the community bylaws, Pathfinder School of Innovation updates, there were community partner updates, um, and transition was identified as a topic for future discussion. Are there any corrections to those minutes? Could we have a motion to accept those minutes, please? So moved. Catherine Sherrard. Catherine Sherrard. Second. Second. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then we'll move into update. Okay. okay. <laughs> Trying to make that sense too. Um, thank you for coming today. And um, I, I just want to share some great news that we did today because um, it was exciting to get out of our spot and in, out in the community today. We went to UPS to see uh, what our students do there and our partnership with UPS uh, and, and our kids that, that work there. And actually, uh, many, many have stayed and continued a job. Um, they have their pictures all over the walls, they have classrooms, and um, they actually have a, a kind of a simulated uh, teaching room. I mean, it's huge, right? It's like a hub, I guess, a simulated hub where they take our students and teach them for two straight weeks of classes and show them what exactly they would be doing on the line, whether it's uh, box, you know, uh, loading or unloading or filling packages, et cetera. So um, the program is extremely successful. Um, the one reason we went today is to see how we can partner and do more and send more kids and uh, have more opportunities for our students. Um, so that's what we're going to meet again. That was my first time at UPS here in Louisville. Um, and it's fantastic. It is the only simulated uh, uh, classroom in any of the UPSs in the United States. So it's fantastic. Very, very, it was very enlightening today and kind of warmed your heart. So I wanted to share that. Um, you know, our goal, we have talked about this in the past uh, pre-pandemic that the goal of our department is transition 
opportunities in the community and what we can do for our children to be successful adults. So we're working towards that. Uh, Jason Wheatley, I know a lot of you probably know him. He was part of our transition. He has left us to go to the Kentucky Department of Ed. I think he's working on one of their transition programs or something similar to that. So um, he, he is not with us right now. So we are in the process of hiring for that position. Um, but Sam Malti's on with us and she partners with us also um, to, you know, to beef up our, our transition program and our work program. Um, Are so, you guys at the speaking? This is Kim Chevalier. Sorry. Kim. Okay. I'm sorry. I just couldn't, I couldn't see the face on the screen. I was like, I just want to make sure I have my notes correct. Thank you. With everything and not just your face when you're in the room. So, <laughs> Well, it, when it's my turn, I'll speak because obviously with Vogue Rehab, we do a lot of work with UPS and I actually most recently got the tour out there myself. So great to hear this conversation. Yeah, what, what was your thoughts about it quickly? So personally myself, I would not want to work in that environment. That's a side note. Um, but I had a phenomenal tour uh, got to actually see some of the uh, workers in person um, and the people could not at the front desk for when you first go in been any more professional and inviting and then not only getting to see uh, those work but talk to them as to how they train them as you said in that two-week TLC course I'm like you know, if this would be up my alley for what I would be looking to do, what an amazing way to get trained to, with such polite, such willing people that despite that noise, <laughs> once you're there, you know, package handling, for example, is up your alley. You're not afraid for the small sort section to climb a ladder. Wow. Um, because, you know, finding people um, that you can work with as coworkers or supervisors that really care, it isn't always an option, unfortunately. Um, and to have talked to such people, I, I felt, you know, very gracious. Um, and it makes me feel good that not only through JCPS, but as a voc re vocational rehabilitation counselor, that I send people there. What a good feeling. Yes, it is. Thank they you. make a difference for sure. Yeah, we can just broaden that. That would be fantastic. Um, if we had more job, if we had more employers out there, out there that you know treated people such a way in such a way, I'd be like, wow. <laughs> well, we need to showcase that a little bit. I feel like so people can see it. Yes, I'll see what I can do to work on that. But that's my take for sure. Perfect. Um, if you do want to know specifically, Michelle Ramsey is the lady um, who took me on the tour, but the staff from Options um, Unlimited is who we specifically connect with out there. Yeah, she was with us today also. Great. Yes. All right. Okay. Thank you. Um, of course, everyone um, wants to know about let's, uh, you know, quarantine, Pathfinder School of Innovation, uh, just to, to briefly touch on that. Um, our Pathfinder School of Innovation is our virtual school. And just to give you a little bit of history, the virtual school was started off as a 6 through 12 JCPS virtual school. That would be a permanent school in Jefferson County. So even though it started with the pandemic in mind and kids being home, the idea of it is for it to continue. Um, the idea was not for K through five to be a part of that, but because of the pandemic, uh, the board and um, our team and Dr. Polio felt very um, felt like we needed to provide that option for all parents. 
So it is a K through 12 or K through 14 program. It's a virtual program. It is a choice by our parents. And we've let over 5,000 kids total. I think we're up a little bit more total in the district in Pathfinder. And there is currently a waiting list. So if you hear people talking about it out in the community, we have, we have taken as, as many bodies as we have teachers for. Um, we are partnering with Florida Virtual Learning for staff. And the waiting list, as kids come in and out, we will be letting those other children in. Um, but we're hoping that those students are currently coming to school or getting an education somewhere. So that is our current Pathfinder update. Um, what else do we have on there? Just yeah. update. Okay. Um, of course, with the quarantine, I'll tell you a little bit about that. Kids that are being quarantined, uh, we do have online, again, a virtual platform that district level resource teachers are providing lessons for. It is not mandatory that the students log on to that. It is optional and students can log in and get a lesson on uh, based on their standards, et cetera. And we also have partnered with an ECE resource teacher to help support those students. I will tell you when they do log in, sometimes there could be five kids and sometimes there can be 150 kids. So it just depends on the time of day or what's happening, um, et cetera. So we are providing services um, in that way for our students that are quarantined. So that's about it. That's kind of been our focus yes. for for the last couple of months, um, hopefully, you know, we are looking at a grading system uh, that that we're going to pilot that john has been the lead in this so i'm very appreciative with that for uh, our alternate assessment students, because, as we know, our grading system currently does not support those children appropriately. So we are using Tom Dusky with his standards based grading and a lot of other resources. They have been working on it for over a year with the academic team and looking at what does that look like to pilot a couple schools, I think in January. Is that right, John, yeah. in January? Mm -hmm. um, to look at a, a, a different type of grading system. They have partnered with KDE and it will be the first um, alternative grading system in the state of Kentucky. So hopefully we're hoping it's gonna be a, a a great opportunity for our students and that the rest of the state will jump on board with us. Ask a question. So this, uh, this grading system for alternate assessment, mm -hmm. is that uh, for the students in the um, no, it's across the board. All across the board. Okay, board. okay, okay, okay. All students. All okay. students on alternate assessment. Okay. 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 I was wondering the same thing. Yeah, okay. and, and, for, and for alternate assessment students that are in Pathfinder, that was a really good question. Um, because the curriculum is very, very difficult for Florida Virtual or Adventum. Um, they, uh, we have created a Google Classroom specifically for those students for the whole district. And they're logging in and using news to you um, and some of the other curriculum that we use in our regular school day. So, and they are taught by our MSD teachers. So uh, we felt like uh, the opportunity was for failure was way too high with them going into these virtual classrooms with no support. Uh, so we created that platform uh, strictly for those kids. So next thing on our agenda are community updates. Someone who would like to start. Mike's How about we start with you and then we can pass the baton as you wish. Hi. Hang on, I gotta unmute you. There we go. There we go. 
I, I didn't hear you. Would you go ahead and give an update? Oh yeah, sure. And you can choose who's what we're next. doing right now is we are doing a book study for families. And it, we had our first one yesterday and it's offered to, on Mondays twice a day, 11.30 a.m. and it's 6.30 p.m. And it's called, the book is No More Meltdowns by Jed Baker. And it's an excellent book. And uh, there'll be sessions to September 27th through October the 18th. And if, if you're still interested, you can contact uh, Michelle Bush at 562-6421 uh, and to get uh, to, to roll for the rest of it. Uh, we'll be having our, our KATC advisory board meeting October 27th and November 30th, where if you have anyone that's interested in serving on the board, just send me uh, an email to let me know that you're interested. And uh, also, uh, I haven't got back with some, but I need, I'll need need a resume for, for those individuals. On um, February the 24th and February the 25th, we'll be doing ADOS virtually. And that will be uh, done by Dr. Rachel Hunley at, from Vanderbilt. And then I had training this morning with ECHO uh, Autism. It's uh, with the training with the Office of Special Health Care Needs at kind of getting off the ground. And we had our first training today of uh, being able to work with, with medical community right now. And that's it. Who would you like to pass the baton to? Who do you want to be next? How about Sam Walty? Oh, I really thought Mike was going to pass it to me and then Bob Napoli unmuted. And so I thought I was off the hook here for a second. <laughs> so I'll go quickly and then Bob, you can go after me. <laughs> Sorry um, about that. Oh, totally fine. Uh, Ginevra, if you want to tag team with me too, that's fine. Um, I think our own, uh, I, for people who don't know, I'm Sam Walty. I'm an assistant professor at U of L in our Department of Special Education, Early Childhood and Prevention Science. Um, I think that probably our biggest update, Ginevra, is something, Ginevra is my chair and colleague at UofL, um, which is why I keep talking to her. I want to make sure I'm not speaking out of turn because we're very, very early on in the processes of something. Yes. Okay, good. I'm taking your head nod as it's okay. Um, so we are in the very early stages of starting a comprehensive transition program at UofL. Um, and that is probably our most exciting update right now. So we, before when Jason was still around, um, I met with Jason and um, some other people as well at state level wide and also um, here and just kind of talked about what, what it would take to get the ball rolling with that. So that's, that's really where we're at. Nothing has happened yet other than very exciting conversations. Uh, Jennifer, do you, have, do you want to add anything to that? Okay. Well, that sounds good to me. All right. Okay, well now, uh, Bob Napoli, you are beneath me on my Zoom, so I will <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, we had a number of things going on since we last met. I, one of the, I think one of the greatest things we've ever done is called the Council Clause in which we collaborate with Churchill Park on collecting personal care items, which will be stored at Churchill Park in a closet. Well, it's outgrowing the closet. It's more like a garage now. <laughs> That's how amazing the outreach was. So. The personal care items will be things like um, briefs and chucks and wipes and things of that nature. Um, as you know, a lot of the teachers um, pay out of their pockets for those items. So they will be readily available for schools and of course families concentrating on underserved areas around Louisville. Um, so I think that was a pretty awesome initiative that we started. Um, we also had a back to school event at Churchill Park on August the 28th. That included community partners like Seven Counties, KTC. Thanks, Mike. Mike was there. Um, Superior Van, Down Syndrome, and, <laughs> and, and others. And it was a great event. We had probably had um, 12 community partners there and a um, number of schools that participated were Churchill Park, Aarons, Benet, Waller Williams, and Phoenix, I think, were the schools that were represented there. Um, so thank you to Shauna Paul at Churchill Park for that, for working with us on that. 
Um, we're going to be having a new project at Aaron's coming up again, another project. The students from Aaron's actually stopped into our council office on Dundee when they're out doing TARC training. So that was pretty exciting to have them actually stop in the office. So we want to try to have um, the project in our office, but it's gonna depend on the pandemic and where that's headed, but uh, we'll figure it out eventually. Um, we're partnering with another agency called Book Bus Spot, and they have sort of a funky 70s magic bus that's traveling around underserved areas of the city, giving away books, free books. Um, and so we're gonna partner with them and we'll provide some book bags and, and um, bookmarks and things like that. So we're looking for some uh, advice from JCPS if we were to take the bus to a school um, you know, what, do we go to the principal for permission to park the bus at the school? And how do we get about getting permission if we can get permission to park by the school? So I'm looking for someone on the committee to help me with that. Um, we have Christine. Yes, yes, through the principal. The principal? Okay, mm -hmm. thank you very much. Um, we have a presentation coming up in October, October the 20th, um, featuring Seven Counties Work Matters Transition Program. So that'll be October 20th at noon, which will be a Zoom presentation or webinar. I'm not really sure yet, but I'm really uh, excited about that in terms of transition and pre-ETS services. So that is coming up. That will, information on that will be on our web page um, and Facebook page um, for more information and registration. You can go to one of those two places. Um, last not least, we're starting an equity program and developing a list of community partners, schools, churches, organizations that are willing to come on board to work with us on um, exploring opportunities there. We've already done a needs assessment to try to determine what we can do to help in those neighborhoods. Again, primarily underserved neighborhoods and, and uh, starting the West End of Louisville. So again, I'm looking for some direction on what schools might be interested in partnering with us if somebody could advise me how to go out ap about approaching the schools in those neighborhoods about working with us. So if you have any input on that, it would be greatly appreciated. Okay. Bob, if you can email me and uh, just give me a little background on that and I'll make sure to get you to the right person. Okay, thank you very much. Who is this, Kim? Kim, uh-huh. Okay. Kim. Thank you, I appreciate that. Thanks, everyone. I have to hand this off, huh? How about uh, who, who's on here? Steve, are you on here? Uh, yeah, I just got to unmute here and let's see, get the audio. There we go. Okay. Yeah, all right. So Steve Noble here. And uh, so I have, I wear several hats in the state, as most of you know. Uh, and and so um, uh, I'll, I'll talk about three different three different hats because they all uh, relate to uh, the e ECE work here. Um, so first of all, uh, you know, I primarily represent the Learning Disabilities Association of Kentucky. So I'm the board president. Uh, obviously that's an unpaid position. So I'm a volunteer on the board, but I sure spend a lot of time uh, working on LDA stuff. But uh, one of the, um, uh, you know, we always have uh, a, a booth at the Kentucky State Fair. so. Uh, we had the state fair in person again this year, so we had a booth there, and so that was very, uh, very successful. Of course, uh, the, the attendance wasn't quite as much as in past years, but uh, we were glad to be back at the fair again this year. Um, one thing we just recently uh, uh, got notified of is we were awarded a grant from the Takeda Foundation. So if you know anything about Takeda, they are a pharmaceutical company. Uh, a very large pharmaceutical company. They bought out Shire, which uh, owns the uh, patent on Adderall. So uh, we went to them and uh, uh, wanting to do some work for uh, kids with ADHD, uh, since uh, ADHD is, uh, you know, Kentucky has uh, used to be listed as the as the largest uh, percentage wise of, of uh, kids with ADHD than any other state in the country. And uh, so they did provide, uh, they, they have just recently awarded us a grant. We don't have the money in the bank yet, but we got the official notification. And that will include uh, uh, ADHD uh, statewide outreach and support. And so uh, one of the things in that grant is to uh, create a series of webinars throughout the year 
uh, which uh, will be uh, primarily our target are parents, parents of kids with uh, ADHD or may suspect that they have ADHD. And that's also adults, especially college students and people that are trying to go back to college that may have ADHD. So those are the two main uh, audiences we're looking at. But uh, as far as this webinar series, we'll, we'll uh, have a, a variety of webinars over the years. We'll include pediatricians, we'll include psychiatrists, psychologists. Uh, 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 also, you know, we, we'd like to in, include some JCPS uh, 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 administrators in, in one of those meetings as well, because we need to talk about, uh, you know, how do you get your uh, you know, as far as if, if your student has, you know, your kid has ADHD, does that mean you, you know, need a Section 504 plan or an ID, you know, all those kinds of things uh, that uh, parents have questions on, and we would like those webinars to be uh, properly addressed by people that have the ability to talk to those issues. So we'll, we're going to be setting that up. And uh, 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 so anyway, I, I will reach out to people to help with those uh, webinars. But we're very excited about that. Uh, another part of that grant is, is they're going to uh, uh, give us a, a, a brand new um, a state fair exhibit booth that we'll be able to use for future years at the uh, at the state fair, plus uh, funding a, a lot of, uh, of uh, uh, printing of, of uh, print publication because a lot of parents like those kinds of things uh, as well. But that's the that's the LDA uh, update. I could I could say just a minute about uh, two other hats. One is that uh, so I, I do a lot of research with PBS Kids and um, uh, on their learning app. So uh, I, I may have talked about this uh, on another app that we worked on in the past. Uh, early learning games, uh, but there is a new one uh, coming through the pipes, and uh, I'll uh, I'll provide information about that. But they're, they're doing a great work in creating uh, fully accessible uh, early learning games that all kids can play. So, uh, they, uh, you know, you can you can play them, um, uh, with, you know, on a on a, uh, a typical computer or, or a, uh, a you know, tablet device or you can play them with a switch or with eye tracking technology. Uh, uh, and it's, you know, it has uh, captions and audio descriptions, of, you know, blind kids can play it, deaf kids can play it. So, uh, so you know, it's, it's really meant to be an all-inclusive game. The, the new one is called Duck Dash, and it teaches, uh, you know, or, uh, some early math principles about how to uh, in, in evaluate data and teaches some stuff on ecology and understanding of uh, the impact of uh, pollution and uh, human activity on wildlife and migration. So that's maybe a very interesting thing, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll provide information about that once, once that it's, it's still in development. They haven't fully released it yet, but I think we're about done. And several Kentucky students were part of the testing of that uh, app. So they always reach out to me to include Kentucky students in the testing of those things. And so yet again, uh, Kentucky had a major role in uh, development of that work. And then the uh, last thing, so I, uh, uh, I, I work for uh, Pearson as well, who is the, the uh, vendor for the state assessment. And uh, so we uh, you know, just concluded uh, last week a speech to text pilot. So uh, JCPS was involved in that pilot. And so I know there's gonna be a focus group next week uh, uh, that I think JCPS can't really be part of because that's your, your break. But, uh, but anyway, we're you know, looking forward to some of all that great data and at the, the Kentucky CEC conference. So we will have a session there. Uh, so I'll be uh, presenting with Kevin O'Hare and Devin Avery and Jason uh, Howard from KDE on uh, uh, all, the, all the, uh, the capability of the new tools that are gonna be in the state assessment that kids with disabilities can use. So a lot of really good stuff coming down the pike. Thank you. And, um, I will pass it on to uh, Allie, I guess, Allie Taylor. Thank you, Steve. Hi, everyone. I'm Allie Taylor. I'm here uh, from Bellarmine University. It's good to see everyone. So an update, we just want to thank JCPS for getting our students into the field. Our first year students are so excited to be in the classroom and not just watching Atlas videos and doing virtual field instruction. So we are super excited about that. 
And an update, we have finally gotten approval from our provost to move forward with our collaboration with Down Syndrome of Louisville. And we're gonna have a college experience starting in the spring that we're gonna pilot for two students with intellectual disabilities. So we are super excited about that. And we're gonna work hard on that plan. And we um, hope to see really good things out of that program. Thank you. Are you still with us? I am. I am with you all still. Uh, I just put everything on mute so I could hear people better, not get necessarily an echo. Uh, so I think that the big, big update since uh, we last met this summer is uh, our pre -ats. The coordinator now, who used to be one of our vocational rehabilitation counselors in this area, is Claudette Taylor. So for students transitioning um, and who eventually want an application taken, these would be our more or less our potentially eligible students. Those that are doing skills um, for the uh, job readiness, job exploration, um, may get connected with a job coach in addition to the services that are provided throughout JCPS with uh, staff who are either uh, CWTP um, staff members such as Lyndon Coffey, um, but some of the other people that also work closely um, at the Aaron Center and who you all mentioned also um, some of the uh, work programs you all have through UPS. So anyone who is going to be doing pre ets we're making sure that those referrals and that information gets directed to Claudette. Um, they will then come to vocational rehabilitation counselors such as myself um, once they either want the application then taken or then become uh, of age of 24. So not necessarily because they are legally, you know, 18, 21 phase out of school under IDEA. We go ahead um, and still serve them, but the pre uh direction is all underneath Claudette Taylor at this point, and she handles billing um, for those types of cases. Um, and then we do continue to meet with clients um, by phone and Zoom. If an appointment is requested in person now, we are meeting with them in person, but they can't just show up to our building. Um, so, and then uh, as far as everything else, uh, just so you all are aware, um, we have started using a program called Unite Us, which helps provide community resources and additional avenues to those who may or may not be aware of certain types of opportunities um, in addition to employment so that they can, therefore, for various treatment needs, housing, et cetera, um, it's just additional resources that we can kind of help just like through JCPS staff, you know, work together in the community. Um, and then at least me personally as a vocational rehabilitation counselor, I actually went to one of my schools. I am actually the counselor for DuPont Manual. So I not only uh, worked closely with the implementation uh, coach, Dewan Garrett there, but actually went for the MSD unit and did like an open house, presented some information, kind of did, um, you know, more of an overview in front of parents as a whole. And that seemed to be really well uh, appreciated and taken. And so I'm wanting to talk more with the additional school counselors. But I think this year uh, we are definitely with the transition of Priets and Claudette Taylor handling those, just trying to take it all with a, you know, step at a time. So that's kind of what's going on with 
vocational rehabilitation at this time. Grace, are you still with us? Are you still here? Catherine, how about you? She gets up and up. No, I've always felt like I was here as a parent who was in. Okay. But we are continuing our plan. I've written down to reach out to Allie Taylor Sullivan because it, at, I would say we don't have the extensive courses that JCTC that Jefferson has. So as much as we would love to replicate the program they have for um, young adults with disabilities, um, I've been put on hold right now. Ms. Roberta, it looked like you were talking. Are you with us? Yes. I'm here. I'm so glad. Um, I don't really have any updates for SPIN right now due to the, excuse me, the virus. Um, we haven't had any active participation. Um, and we are in the process of scheduling um, what we're going to be doing for the following uh, at, at, at the beginning of October. And that will all be hopefully on, on our website. Um, we are in the process, we will be hiring um, three people we, we're hoping. Um, and I forgot to write down what, what they were, I'm sorry. But uh, we are in, in the process of hiring. And um, you can go to our website and get the information and, and the pay and the hours and everything. Uh, that's about all we have. Thank you. Grace, are you with us? Would you like to give us an update? Me? Yes. Yeah. Oh, just uh, as a parent, as a grandparent. Okay. But um, I turned on the path over to Bullock County. But uh, I figured I'd stay, you know, keep coming. And, uh, Thank you. Uh, when I, I talked to him and I talked to him, I believe we had some issues going into uh, my granddaughter with uh, her. Uh, the way they the way they originally assess where she needs to be with and you know things like that and, and you know and that's why I really got involved and it seems like it's come around a long way now. I, the reason I haven't been in any of the Zoom is because I got meningitis from right about the time COVID started and I've had hip replaced and now I've got to have shoulder so I've been out for a while. I just kind of just playing a little bit. I felt like I wanted to count kind of the, the meetings in person. You know, if I can be in any assistance, you know, I've, I got a pretty good relationship with uh, Debbie down in house. I mean, she's great. Um, I mean, I like to see as much support to them as, you know, they, they, they're amazing down there. Down house. And for kids, they really are. Yeah. And I just want to say one thing with Stacy being new with us and taking over the screen, she's done fabulous. I know we haven't <laughs> just get started, you're all good. But um, with her being our community liaison, um, very uh, highly educated in special education, um, et cetera. And you can tell a little bit about you because I think it's you have a great story, and she is someone we can reach out to. 
um, and really make those connections. And I, I want them to know who you are. Great. Grace, do you not have a button where you could unmute? She's on her phone, never tries star six. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Just gonna check, <laughs> and I'll just tell you a little bit about me. Uh, special education was my second career. I was a state social worker for a decade. Um, education is an ongoing services. Um, my son was diagnosed with autism. Between four and five years old. And so that led to his second career for 17 years now. So I was a classroom teacher for a long time. Um, the literacy background and just, just thrilled to be part of this, this team. So I have a, I have a heart for parents and, and also a heart for teachers and um, about the possibilities of Connecting with our community and building stronger structures. I haven't done any streaming. No, I haven't done any. What if you let everybody unmute? You know what that was? Someone else tried to unmute, possibly, that says you can. If you get a mute all, is there a button? Okay, there we go. Try it now, Grace. Let's check. Well, we'll keep trying, Grace. We won't forget you. Mm -hmm. We'll keep trying. The um, this is Ginevra. It looks like the whatever it was was fixed because I can unmute now. All right, so we'll move into our roundtable discussion and the, the topic that we identified at the last meeting was transition. And I know we've talked a lot about that already, but if someone would like to uh, begin a conversation about transition, the floor is open for that. Some responses that you got back, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes, and that that was also identified. So, any updates with any more transition or what else you would like to say? I know I wrote it down. Um, we talked about summer programming. What can we do transition-wise and community-based activities during the summer? Um, not doesn't always 
have to be academic based for a lot of our kids. So a lot of our students didn't get their community based activities. So how can we make that up this summer? So I know um, when we come back in February, I would really, uh, I was talking to Stacy, really like to get a schedule together that we can plan some time with each of you and see, you know, what project would you like to do? How can we partner and get started on the planning piece of that? So all of our students in the district have an opportunity to do some community-based work. And I realize at the middle school level, so going back several years, a lot of times, uh, much like with the unified basketball mm -hmm. game, it was really contingent upon the availability of buses and bus drivers. And I realized <laughs> that that's a shortage mm -hmm. as it is for so many people with jobs and finding the workers, workers period right now. So if there's, if that's a possibility this summer, it also gives opportunity for bus drivers. Well, I will tell you, I have some good news on that. Now, it might take a few years. <laughs> Dana Collins and I worked uh, extremely hard on um, ordering vans and handicap accessible vans for the ECE department for our schools. I think it was 12, Dana, is that, is that what it was, using our ESSER funds? So Dr. Palio was very happy to, to use those funds. Now, it's gonna, everybody's doing that, so it's going to take a couple of years to get those in. Um, as we know with all the other automobiles around yeah. here, but just so you know, that is coming and it's specifically for our students. Mm -hmm. So that will give us an opportunity. Well, sometimes the, which I think is wonderful. Yeah. So I don't, I, as I hear it coming out of my mouth, I'm like, don't be Debbie Gallon. Um, but whenever they would go on the bus, it would either be the teacher or the aide and take turns to make sure that because not everyone would go at once. Mm -hmm. Is that something that then in advance would need to be uh, negotiated into teacher contracts if they're also driving in addition mm -hmm. to? So they have already put something in place. The district, I think they added an extra $6 on top of their regular salary to drive their hourly rate. So now I don't know how long that's going to go on. You know, if they're going to continue with that next year, it just depends. But right now, they're really pushing for teachers to drive. Um, I remember growing up, every one of my teachers drove our buses. So, I mean, it was just the thing to do to make extra money. So, they are uh, advertising and hopefully doing that because, you know, we need like well, teachers to drive. Not to get the vans and then. And if they get the vans, they don't have to have a CDL. That's correct. So that's why we did that too, because they don't have to go through the CDL training. Yeah. So that will help. So are they going to do away with the accessible school buses or are they adding the vans to the buses that do exist? So we're adding the vans and um, the buses, we went back and forth because actually the vans aren't much less than the buses. Okay. However, However, why we didn't do that is because you don't have to have a CDL, so a lot more of our staff can drive the vans, and um, the fleet of buses that we have to have, there's a requirement for that, so that will never go away, right? That will always, and our, uh, when we, we met with the transportation team multiple times, and they feel um, that their rotation of handicap accessible buses currently are in good shape. So we're, we do keep those buses when we can't use them on a regular route for activity buses. And um, as those come up, come up, new ones come up, then we continue to keep the old ones. They just can't be Okay. Honest. So good question. And one of the things that we had in mind with these vans was the transition activities and just getting the kids out in the community more. That was, that was one of the primary reasons behind uh, doing this. So, so again, it may take a little while, but, but we'll get there. <laughs> makes makes very much so, uh, you know, good sense, logical thinking. Even today at our UPS tour, transition was identified as a big barrier for students yes. to participate in those programs. Transportation is, has been our biggest barrier. <laughs> Can, can I add a little something? I mean, outside of, you know, the school day where there would be buses, 
um, or these vans being used, but uh, just something for, you know, general knowledge out there, even in sharing with students and or their families. Um, as a vocational rehabilitation counselor, I know that, you know, a lot of times people don't have the income, um, you know, outside of say TARC or TARC 3, if they're eligible, but just so depending on where people had down the road, um, and of course being minors, um, you know, they're not necessarily able to go unless they're with a of age person, guardian with a Lyft or Uber. But I, I do know, say someone is in a wheelchair and they need a, uh, an accessible vehicle and they page for Lyft or Uber, you can make that happen and request that on the apps. Um, so I just did want to mention that as we're talking about accessible transportation too. Um, just good knowledge out there. Good to know. Thank you. Yes, that way it kind of surprised because I've had people ask me that there is an actual feature on the app that you can use. So if anybody has questions, um, feel free to email me and I can walk you through that. Because of course, too, you all do have students that are of age, so, you know, they can, they can use that. Discussion around transition. The U of L program that was being discussed a little bit that were submitted of it. Is that something that is also anticipated to be? expansion of the PAC program or? Sam, could you give us some more information about? Yep, yep, great question. Um, we talked about that because we were like, we don't want it to be competing with PACT. We definitely want them to both be able to exist and both be successful. Um, so we, we were thinking of a couple of different models, like either PACT, um, either they're just two totally separate things um, or somehow we can structure it so that PACT is kind of um, either totally appropriate and some students just stay there, um, or for some other students, it's where they're building skills so that they would go to the CT, like the U of L based CTP. Um, so we're still kind of talking about what that looks like, but but yeah. So and we definitely don't want it to supplant. Pact. <laughs> we don't want to kill Pact. We love Pact. Um, we, but I think our, in theory, our idea is that if we can have something that's U of L based, um, that we we have control over sounds weird, but you know what I mean. Like when 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 if we want to change something or do something, like we we can do that and like make it bigger and and make connections across the university that I. I think all of that would then transfer to PACT because I know that right now, um, having talked to Aaron and Renee, like there's frustration about things that come just from not being U of L students. And so I think if we've got, I think, I hope that if we've got this other program where they would be U of L students, that the partnership between the two would open some doors for PACT too. Um, so basically my answer is I'm not 100% sure right now what that relationship would look like, but uh, we, A, we don't want to kill PACT and B, I think, I think that it would become, and obviously the goal is that we want it to be, um, you know, a reciprocal relationship where they both bring things to the table and make each other better. But again, this is, we're really early on, so hopefully nothing I said sounded scary. <laughs> what is the projected launch date then for that program? Um, Awesome question too. I think um, it would be extremely hopeful to even say that it would be the beginning of the 2022 school year. I don't think that'll happen. Um, I think we might have some pieces, but it definitely won't be a recognized because it's, it's a federally recognized thing to be a true CTP. Um, and I don't think we will be there by then just because of all the planning that has to take place behind the scenes. So I would say there will be pieces next year for sure, but probably not an official thing until probably 2023. But even, in, I, th I think that even in the building stage, the pieces that we're coming up with as we build it can be beneficial to PACT in the meantime. That's the goal anyway. 
we do have a comment from Grace in the chat. Okay. Um, Grace, and I'm sorry, I don't want to mess up how to say your last name. I think it's Carapazal. Um, she is from the Norton Autism Center. And she said that they are offering diagnostic evaluations, individual and group therapy. They offer in-person as well as virtual. They have medical staff, neurology, psychiatry, developmental pediatrics. We are also very involved, very involved in expanding our transition services. So we would love to get the staff off and your new transition staff. So thank you so much. Thank you very, very um, much. So yes. sorry about I'm not sure what's going on. Why you <laughs> why you can't unmute Grace, but thank you for sharing your update. What um what future topics? Would we like to bring to the table for our February meeting? Anyone? Um, <laughs> um, I think we've talked before just about that transition timeline. So, for instance, I'm a parent. My son is 17, he'll be 18 in April. We've not held him back through his um, school years this far. So, um, as far as knowing the next thing, our next art meeting is into the spring. But because I'm one of those people who ask questions, I know that we're going to apply for the patch program. That really needs to happen now, this fall. I think I have November in my mind. But as far as really knowing those steps, where should I be going? Um, and it's it's not that it's on the fault of the staff at the school because I've maybe not asked the right question at the right time. So just thinking through that, uh, how to get that word to the parents. And I, mean, I do believe that it's discussed during the arc, but when it was spring. But if you need it now, we need to make sure you get it now. Right. I don't <laughs> find out in yeah, the arc. Right. That's our really should have done that in fall yes. and sorry. So so we'll get you yeah. that information, Catherine. So we'll, Thank you. We'll make sure that that you get that information. Help deadline wasn't like September. I'm interested in working not only very closely still with the schools I'm assigned to, but to have the word spread. And I don't mind talking not only to my, you know, coworkers that also serve schools. But I think it's important to bring to the table here um, as we're talking about transition, you know, so many of the times these students were invited to the arcs and they often are like, well, I, I'm not interested, maybe down the road or yes, let's go ahead and jump on board. So, you know, kind of really making sure that they, that the parents, the guardians, not only are well aware of what we do, um, maybe not just by, you know, us showing up to a meeting, even virtually, but to have something written. But then also if an ARC, most importantly, is the second half of the school year, if there's any way we could be brought in sooner, because if especially if we have students that are wanting to go to college for vocational rehabilitation, we have to take an application. And then we have 60 days um, to do an eligibility and then 90 days to develop a plan. So if we don't get someone applying for our services until the very end of the school year, trying to get them ready for college, for example, that's you know against a time frame and rushing and some of these students maybe want to go to school to become a teacher to become you know doing something to do with animals an engineer but they have no experience and we kind of need to help sort that out with them instead of just paying for school or helping them do certain tasks so to jump on board sooner um, with the cooperation of jcps um, especially for those that want to go to college, not necessarily just to work would be very helpful. And can I ask you um, sure. that okay. is there any way that you could, I don't want to say write a script or a summary or a timeline of, of dates of, of different needs that you have? 
because because we have so many teachers at JCPS and sure. things only go so far, but it would be nice for them. We're trying to put together a packet, like a transition packet eventually. And if okay. we support with that and um, saying, okay, so by their eighth grade year, these are the things we have to make sure that we do, um, especially with teacher turnover, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So um, I would love if you could share something with us as far as timelines, that would be fantastic. I guess it helps if I write the word transition instead of transportation. <laughs> yes, uh, that too, right. Uh, I would be more than happy because we do and we can start serving those at age 14 to kind of gradually work on that process. Like we went back earlier in today's meeting and said pre -ets. but if we can start working with those students that, you know, want to move on sooner, especially with the college, I agree. I actually have something I've put together to share with all of my schools, but not everyone, for example, is going to be looking to go to college. We, you know, that's different. And some people need that more intense help. So if we can break it down and then I share that with you all so you can put it together for your teachers, I do. I do think that would be very beneficial. And you can think of point of clarification, or is that only for students, or is that for include students that are on a certificate track as well as the diploma mm -hmm. track? It so. does. So, so we serve students um, that, or those that transition, who, I, I am hesitant to say we serve, I mean, we do, but they actually become a client of ours after application and once they're determined eligible, okay? So pre and all these other services like helping with CWTPs, GLEC, um, you know, those are all services that we pay out and help with, you know, with the school system. But yes, so we serve those who graduate with a diploma, those who get the certificate and phase out, um, we also serve individuals who get SSI, disability, or both. So, you know, once they become adults as well. And then if someone has a disability and they've been in the school system or they have a disability and we take them on as an adult, if they do not receive SSI or disability, we still, if they meet our criteria by doctors or any kind of assessment from a psychologist, so it is not just SSI or disability, and it is not just those with certificates. This is Roberta. I'd like to see um, if what um, Maggie's talking about putting together for teachers, what about parents? Because there are a lot of parents who don't know what to what they're going to do with their, their child when once they're they can't go to public school anymore. We're going to work on that, Ms. Roberta, I promise. <laughs> that is our goal, for sure, to have a packet of information yeah. when those students turn 14. And, 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 and Ms. Roberta, a lot of what I have given to my schools, for example, kind of breaks down the summary of the different programs while they are in high school. Um, but as a voc rehab, counselor there's only so much I can do and like they they are saying here in today's meeting what it takes a village we're working on this together but I, yes I appreciate that because maybe that will help me and help the other high school the other counselors that serve high school students you know tweak things that there's always room for improvement so thank you okay um I think it would help them you know because a sure. lot of we Sometimes when we're talking to parents, we're telling them stuff that they have never heard of. And then they're hesitant about asking for further information. So uh, if something, you know, like that, along with some other information we've got, would really help them. Absolutely. And where are you with? I'm with you... Kentucky Spin. Spin. Okay, great. And I actually used to be connected with uh, Kentucky Spin many years ago. So, good deal. Okay. Are there any other teacher topics? If not, 
we'll plan on having our next meeting early February, either the 9th or the 16th. We will look at schedules and get that out in plenty of time. Um, thank you so much for me, your time, your commitment to our kids. And when we come, yes, thank you. And when we come uh, in February, I'm going to work with Stacy to have some sort of schedule to sign up for as far as partnership for the summer and what that possibly looks like. Wonderful. Because if we don't get it on the calendar, it never works, does it? <laughs> I, I'm actually. It's funny you said that. At the very end of this year's calendar, I've started writing down, for example, my my clients that can be closed out after so much successful time um, of being employed, I've actually had to just start making a list because I don't have next year's calendar yet. <laughs> we need to keep ourselves organized. Yes. Right. Very much. And we will see you in February. Right. Take care, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.